Hey guys, 22 Plinkster here. I usually don't do product reviews, but as you see on the table here, there are a few scopes. But one of these things are not like the other. It's this guy. You see, this company called Sonicking has been contacting me for several months, at least once a day, sometimes up to five times a day, wanting me to review their $17.99 Amazon scope. When I found out they were contacting my other YouTube friends that are in the gun community, uh, they were doing the same thing to them. They actually blocked them and these companies were opening up other emails, uh, new email addresses and still sending it to them. They wanted to send me a brand new free one, but after they pretty much just was adamant about me doing a review on their optic, I bought it. So I spent $17.99 of my hard earned money and I bought an ultimate tactical Sonic King 3x9x40 optic. On firearms, on my channel, I usually stick with Bushnell, Leopold, or Trigicon. I love those three different kinds of scopes. You've seen other scopes on my channel, I like them too, but these are three of my primary scopes that I use on all my firearms. But this one, let's just read what's on the box. It is a 3 by 9 by 40 full-size tactical optics, okay? That's what it says right there on the box, and you know it's got to be tactical if it printed right there on the box. Um, it has a six times zoom range, four inch safe eye relief. That's guess compared to an unsafe eye relief. A big eye box, not really for sure what they mean by that. I guess a front objective. And um, let me see, ultra wide field of view, remove image deformation and locking tactical turrets. Yeah. Excellent clarity with high grade optical glass. Mutech TM multi-coating, whatever the heck that means. 60 by 61 T6 aircraft quality aluminum. I've heard of that. Pretty good stuff. Waterproof, fogproof, and shockproof. That's where I come in. Let's unbox this thing, see what it looks like. All right. All right, you have an Allen wrench. Instructions. Oh, look at that, a lens cloth. That really set them back. And you have... <laughs> <laughs> a tactical scope in a plastic bag wrapped with a rubber band. All right, no star phone in that box to protect it whatsoever in shipping. So I guess they are so confident in their optic, they are not worried about it messing up when FedEx or UPS is shipping it to your house. First and foremost, as lens covers. I mentioned before, it's a three by nine by 40. It has an adjustable objective from 10 yards to infinity and beyond. To infinity and beyond. I can't believe it. This must really set them back. It came with its own tactical rings. These look like they are low rings, but I am curious about something. Before we even get started, all right, the email said this is a great quality scope, okay? This is the definition of quality. Now I'm going to give a 100% fair review to this optic. I'm going to see if it is fog proof. I want to see if it's waterproof. I want to see if it's shock proof. I want to see if it tracks. And then I'm going to abuse it a little bit. But the first thing I want to see, they said that this thing is fog proof. Right now in this room, it's probably 68 degrees. The scope has been in here all day long. Outside, it's about 85 degrees. It's really humid. So I wanna see if this scope will immediately fog up coming from a air conditioned room to outside. So let's get started. And let's just walk outside and see if this thing fogs up. It's very difficult to do this. As you can see before, it was not fogged up and it is raining. Look, it is not fogged up. Pretty humid out here. Still not fogged up. You know, I, I do have to say that the glass is pretty good in this um, in this little optic. It's pretty clear, as you can tell. So, right through the woods is what I'm looking at there. And it did not fog up. So, it passed the fog test. All right, I have got the Sonicking 3x9x40 tactical nail driving scope mounted on a 
$1,200 Vacortsen 1022. I will be shooting some Federal Gold Medal Ultra Match. Now, the reason why I picked this rifle and picked this ammo is because I want to do this. Um, it's something called tracking. If you don't know what tracking is, it's how you can kind of tell whether a scope, you can zero it in or not. I'm going to shoot one shot to show you guys that this rifle is zeroed in. And then after that, I'm going to shoot dead bullseye. I'm probably going to shoot at the top left dot first, uh, just to show you that it's zeroed, then dead bullseye. After I hit the bullseye on the middle one, I'm going to move the scope over 20 clicks, fire. Then I'm going to move it down 20 clicks, fire. Move it to the left 20 clicks, fire. Move it again to the left 20 clicks, fire. Move it up. 20 clicks fire and then move it right 20 clicks and fire the last shot that i shoot i should hit very very close if not in the same hole as the very first shot that i put on paper if i don't and the bullets are everywhere means that the scope is pretty much junk and it will not track so without any further ado let's get to shooting all right first shot i'm just going to show you guys that it is zeroed in and i'm going to be shooting the top left bullseye we got a camera down range where you can see all right so i missed the center of the bullseye maybe about a quarter of an inch at you know seven o'clock so this is fine for this testing now we're going to the center shoot the bullseye in the center and then start doing our tracking test Okay, now I'm gonna go right, 20 clicks. All right, and we'll put one on paper. Still aiming at the same spot. I should print 20 clicks to the right. Which that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna go down 20. Twenty, aiming at the same spot from the first shot. Wow, that's not too bad actually. All right, let's go left twenty. It should print right below that first shot in the middle. And I kind of did. You see a pattern? They are drifting more to the left. So I'm gonna go 20 more to the left. 20. All right. Still aiming at the same spot. Okay. Go up 20. Okay, in this last shot, when I go right 20, this last shot should be very close to dead bullseye uh, on the very first shot. If it's off like an inch, that's not good. It means it didn't track well. Look at that. <laughs> it's actually touching the very first shot. So, man, this is making me so upset. I wanted this scope to fail so bad but it passed the clarity test it passed the fog test and it passed the tracking test now that this scope is zeroed let me go grab a um, rubber <laughs> hammer and let's do a little bit of tapping on the scope see if it holds zero all right i went inside and grabbed my rubber mullet not a mullet. All right, I went inside and grabbed my rubber mallet, and I've got another target downrange. The scope actually tracked. You know, it was off a quarter, an inch, half inch at 50 yards, but a little bit of that could be, you know, I will give it a half inch of play left or right. Now we're going to see in real world situations. So you have your rifle sighted in, and you're in the woods, and you leaned your rifle against the tree, and it slid off the tree and fell on the ground. Would this scope take that fall and still uh, be zeroed in. And this is real world, you know, circumstances because 
when you go hunting, when you go out shooting, your guns travel, you know, in vehicles, they get bumped around a little bit, no matter if they're in a case or not, you set them down on a, uh, on a shooting bench. So we're gonna see if this rifle, or excuse me, if this scope will actually uh, be shockproof like the, um, uh, like the box said, because it is a tactical scope. And if it's not shockproof, what good is it? So we gotta see if this thing will hold zero. It will track, it is fog proof, and it's pretty clear, but is it shock proof? I'm gonna shoot right in the middle to confirm that this scope is sighted in. Okay, low right, shot lower, low right. So, all right, let me give it a couple of taps. I'm gonna give it three taps on each side. Those are very light taps. All right, I'm aiming for the same spot. That's not bad, actually on the same hole. So let's get a little bit tougher with the taps. Okay, those aren't very hard taps, but a little bit harder than the first ones. Uh-oh, shot about an inch and a half to the right. I didn't hit this scope very hard at all. That would simulate a small fall uh, dropping again. Let me let me tap it a few more times, see if I can even get it to go more. Like I said, I'm not hitting this thing very hard. Still aiming for the first shot, the first hole that I put on paper. Oh yeah, it's still going to the right. All right, let me hit it a little bit harder to see how far I can get it off. Now, that, those are a little bit harder wax. Now, it could be some of the rings here because these rings aren't good quality rings, but we'll just see. I'm thinking it's gonna be about an inch farther to the right. Yep, yep. So, in no way, shape, or form, this setup is this scope shockproof. Um, you know, that could have been just you sitting the gun down hard on like a concrete shooting bench or a gun slipping and falling. Your zero at 50 yards, you know, when I got just a little bit harder with the taps was off to the right an inch. So at 100 yards, that could have been three inches or four inches. It's kind of hard to tell depending on what caliber and, and so on and so forth. But that could be pretty much you going home with the deer of your dreams or <laughs> you going home with a big X. Now, I proved that the scope is not shockproof whatsoever. Everything is tight on here. I did not loosen anything. You saw that it held zero on the first shot. Now let's see if this thing is waterproof. This ought to be fun. All right, now the fun part. As you can tell, we are fixing to do some water testing. And there's not any water in this scope whatsoever right now, okay? Um, but we're gonna see if this thing is waterproof so there's no water in this scope so let's see if this thing is waterproof i'm gonna hold it in there for about 10 seconds all the way down okay here we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right i did not see any bubbles all right, let's see. Let's see if it is indeed waterproof. I can't. It's hard to see through this. It looks like it's waterproof. Let me look through my naked eye here. There isn't any water in the scope. So if you are out hunting and you have this scope on there, which I wouldn't because it's not shockproof, but if you did and you accidentally dropped your rifle in a creek for 10 seconds and got it out, it is waterproof. It did not take on any water. I don't know how long I could leave it in the swimming pool. It went down about four and a half, five feet, you know, until it started taking on water, but the box said waterproof, it's waterproof. 
there's another test that we need to try out. Um, unfortunately, probably, I don't know, at least 100 to 150 scopes a year die from this tragic cause. And it's not from dropping it, um, you know, on, on rocks while transporting it from point A to point B. It, it's a very common incident and it happens a lot in the South. And it's this guy right here does the dirty work. So we've seen if it is fog proof, which it is. We saw if it's clear, which it is. We saw if it tracked, it did. However, it was not shock proof, but it is waterproof. Now let's see if it's weed eater proof. All right, everything looks to be intact. Let me see, the glass is okay. The glass did not bust out. On either side, let me see if the crosshairs are still straight in it. And they are, the crosshairs are still straight in it, so the crosshairs did not move. So is it weed eater proof? Well, the answer is yes. Let's give this thing another test. All right, the million dollar question. Is it aeroproof? I've got my new Matthews Halon 32 bow. And let's see if this scope can stop an arrow. You know, it could happen in real life. Oh, wind. Oh my goodness. Well, let me set my Matthews down. The go tip arrow is no more. But you could say that it, um, yeah, it shattered the lens quite a bit. We knew that this thing would probably or probably not stop an arrow. <laughs> I'm surprised that that arrow did not go all the way through it. Uh, but that glass is pretty hard. So it is quality glass, like, like they say on their box. So, all right, one more test to do and we'll wrap this video up. Now you see, this is actually a real world problem. You never know when, say you're hunting out in the field and your scope just falls off your gun and the next day your buddy bush hogs the field. You gotta know whether your $17.99 scope can actually withstand a bush hog. Oh, this is gonna be ugly. Oh, oh. Uh, don't think it survived that one. Well, I think the scope <laughs> is no more. Let's go inside where it's much cooler. Let me give you my final thoughts on the $17.99 Amazon scope. All right, now we're back in the room where it's much cooler. <laughs> now we had a little bit of fun towards the end of this video. And I know that there's not a scope out there that is arrow proof or that is bush hog proof. I came into this review as an honest review to give it, you know, a 100% honest opinion. But when I found out that this would not hold zero with a few small taps uh, on the turrets there, you know, I, it was it was no good in my collection, you know, and I did not feel right giving it to somebody that knowing every time they would go out, they would have to recite in their firearm. And you're probably saying, well, it's their business. They can do that if they want to. Well, yes and no. If you're using this for a hunting scope and you have to sight it in every time you go out and you leave out early one morning, you may not have time to re-sight in your scope right before you go hunting because it's dark, of course. And if you're going to use this for a hunting scope, you owe it to the animal 
to use good ammunition, you know, an accurate rifle and a good optic, you know, that way you can make a good clean kill on that animal. And especially if you're using this for self-defense, you know, if you have this out on a bug out gun or an AR or something like that, no way in this world would I ever put a $20 optic on something that may save my life one day. I know to some of you, a $20 optic is all you can afford and that's fine. You know, buy it, shoot it. And when you replace it just a couple months later, you can buy another $20 optic and replace it and so on and so forth. But I have always recommend good quality optics and um, I always will. But, you know, it is what it is. I had high hopes for it when I saw it grouping the way it did and how it tracked. I was excited, but it is fog proof. It is waterproof and it does track. And you know what? It is not shock proof. I was going to throw it on a 4570, but after just a few small taps, I know good and well that there is no way I could ever even zero this scope in. And you know, that way I could make sure shot after shot after shot if it held zero because it was all over the place just after a few small taps and the recoil of a 4570 is just, you know, it's a beast. But guys, I'm not trashing the scope. Um, I had fun with it, yes, by destroying it at the very end, but I am not trashing it. If you want to go out and spend $17.99 on a Amazon Prime scope, you go right ahead. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I don't recommend it. Guys, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. Go over to my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter page and ask them there. And until next time, y'all be safe and keep on plinking. Mm -hmm.